What does Jerusalem mean for you? Jerusalem is a city, I think uh, it's connection, all the religious, Muslim, Christian, Jews. I also feel like Jerusalem is a place of connection, it's home. And what does Jerusalem mean to you? Uh, Jerusalem means a uh, home. Everybody could come here, doesn't matter who they are, and they could come and um, appreciate and enjoy beer and hang out together. There's nobody, uh, nobody's an outsider and everybody's uh, interesting. It's beautiful. Why do you think it is around the world that the media portrays Jerusalem as a city of conflict? When every day I walk around and see everybody outside in cafes, eating, raising their kids, dancing in the streets, singing, uh, and it really is a place, a cosmopolitan place, accepting of all. Because nobody would watch that on TV. <laughs> Everybody just wants to see what's being blown up and, uh, you know, what's going on outside. And outside influences have a lot of uh, pressure here. I started working on this documentary about Jerusalem a year before the United States announced it would recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. I've loved Jerusalem my entire life, as a teenager, as a husband, as a father, and as a rabbi. I've sensed that since the constant Palestinian violence has proven ineffective in destroying the state, new tactics to delegitimize Israel have taken hold. Quiet. Quiet. Those arguments, which include the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, known as BDS, disguised as a movement to help the Palestinians, is actually a movement trying to destroy the modern state of Israel. They will oppose a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. Those nefarious tactics have now been focused on the Jewish spiritual and political capital city of Jerusalem. We will stay to fight and fight and fight to get Jerusalem capital of Palestine. A day after the United Nations marked Yom Kippur as an official holiday, the UN's educational and cultural organization voted Judaism's most holy sites aren't Jewish at all. UNESCO gave preliminary approval to a resolution ignoring the Jewish connection to Jerusalem's Temple Mount and Western Wall. UNESCO just denied the 4,000 year connection between the Jewish people and its holiest site, the Temple Mount. That's just as absurd as denying the connection between the Great Wall of China and China. I felt that Jews, especially in America, had trouble stating a coherent response to these attacks on Jerusalem. Why is it a big deal for the United States to acknowledge Jerusalem as the capital of Israel? As soon as I take office, I will begin the process of moving the United States ambassador to the city of Israel as chosen as its capital. Jerusalem will remain the capital of Israel and it must remain undivided. It is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Why does Jerusalem mean so much to the Jewish people and the Jewish state? And why must all of its holy sites remain under Israeli control? My name is Nolan Leibovitz, and if you saw my first documentary, Roadmap Genesis, you know that when I have questions, I search for answers and make a documentary in the process. This is that new documentary. I knew to find my answers, I had to travel to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, in my eyes, is not a city, it's an idea. It's the place from which spirituality uh, should come to the world and goodness should come to the world. And that's foreign to us to see a geographic place as an idea. But there's no doubt in my mind, as we study the history and the sources and why Jerusalem is our capital, that it is this idea which should be the source of good for the world. To stand up for Jerusalem, the place and the idea, we have to be sure about its heritage. Jerusalem has been part of Jewish history for more than 3,000 years, and there is no better starting point for the Jewish narrative than the Bible. And how do we know that the stories about Jerusalem from the Bible are true? we have archaeology to validate them. The first time we come across what seems to be Jerusalem is actually in chapter 14 in Genesis. Abraham comes back from war and he meets Melchizedek, the king of Shalem, of Salem. And now comes the question, what is Salem? Already in the third century, we have the Aramaic translation of the Torah that tells us that is Yerushalayim. It translates it Salem, Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. 
David comes into the into the Canaanite, into the uh, devastated town of, of Shalem, and comes into the city, and then of course takes the city from within. How did the city develop? In front of us, we have the Temple Mount itself, and the archaeological excavations you can see very, very clearly in this area to the south and to the west of the Temple Mount, and the Herodian Street is right there. You can see that line that comes all the way through over there along the side of the Temple Mount would have been the Herodian Street. This was the street that was built around or to the western side of the, te of, the, of the Temple Mount, what is now known as the Western Wall, uh, during the time that was after the building of the temple itself. And what are all of these stones around us, these, these large uh, groupings of stones? You can see behind me these individual compartments would have been shops. You could even see that they are, that the back is burnt, the stone is blackened, which is from the destruction of the, the, destruction of the temple. The, even the, the stone behind it has been shattered by the fire within the shops themselves. So this blackening is from the Romans from in the year 70? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they literally pushed those stones down from yeah. the top of the Temple Mount. That's right. And there, here they rest That's right. for 2,000 years. That's right. Where the, uh, where the Dome of the Rock uh, now stands on the same platform that is there today, or in that general area, whereas where the Holy of the Holies would have been on the western side of the, uh, of, of, uh, of the temple, on the eastern side you would have had the altar. David has two dreams. He is a king, he's chosen by God. He wants to create a heart of the people that he's supposed to lead. He creates it in a city, in a place, in a location that straddles the border between Judah and Benjamin. Judah being the son of Leah, and Benjamin being the son of Rachel, the two matriarchs. These are the two powerful parts of the Jewish people. And he chooses to place the heart, the national heart, right at that moment. But you cannot have a national heart if you don't have the spiritual heart. And so he plans to build a temple. He even purchases the mountain, which today is known as the Temple Mount. Uh, but God stops him. And God says, you are not going to build by the nature of his profession, shed a lot of blood. I think there's a very strong message there that the temple has to be built in a peaceful way. And where are you from? I'm from London. And I'm from Venezuela. All of my family originally came from Iran. I came here from Paris. I live in Mamach um, Like a suburb of Jerusalem. Hey, I grew up in Jerusalem, here. <laughs> and I grew up in Boston. Uh, New Jersey. New Jersey, I've yeah. heard of it. What brings yeah. you to Jerusalem? Um, so I actually did my gap year here two years ago. Um, and this is my first time back. This is my first time in Jerusalem since I did my gap here just down the road. And what does Jerusalem mean to you? Um, really, I didn't realize as much until today. The center of the country that I live in and my favorite place in the world. First and foremost, most cosmopolitan city in Israel. I mean, there's everything here. It's really varied. All the walls here mean something. All the, the every walks, every, every single building means something. I think it's very special. For me, Jerusalem is a very special place. My dad is a Christian and I'm a Jew. So this city really represents multiculturalism of my family. When my dad comes to visit and comes to his uh, holy places, I feel proud of being part of the, of the state that, that is not just protecting, but pro promoting the tourism, the Christian tourism in this holy city. And where are you from? Uh, originally Toronto, but I'm in New Jersey at the moment. Toronto, New Jersey, Jerusalem. Yeah. yeah Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So what does Jerusalem mean to you? For me, it's a place where even when I'm lost, I'm always home. You know, even if I don't know where I am. Um, somewhere where I can be myself. In I can be a, my religious self, my secular self, um, just my human self. Um, all at the same time. And that's okay and that's accepted. Why do you think Jerusalem provides you with the opportunity to be yourself and Toronto doesn't? It's um, a good question. It's incredible to me. I, I meet with members of parliament from around the world and groups from around the world, both here in Israel and I travel uh, overseas. And I present to them evidence. Not uh, an idea, not a belief, not faith. We will show them remains of the temple, uh, signatures of Jewish leaders from that time, clear evidence of King David and his reign in the area of the city of David. I've brought visitors to the city of David, which for me speaks to me the most in terms of establishing our connection to this land. And there are some people who it moves and some people are impacted, but it always amazes me how 
people are able to somehow separate themselves and divorce themselves from absolute facts about a Jewish connection to this city for thousands of years. The fact that our Bible talks about Jerusalem close to 700 times, and let's say in the Muslim faith, in the Muslim Quran, it doesn't mention it at all. That's not to say that I deny their right to pray here and worship here. We're still giving them that right. But to suggest that somehow this is a Muslim holy site and not Jewish, when for thousands of years we've been talking about this story, where we can hold in our hands coins and seals from Jews and Jewish leaders who are mentioned in the Bible, it just shows me that there's another agenda at work over here. We're not searching. They're not searching for the truth. They're not approaching the issue with intellectual honesty. There's a bias and an agenda to separate any Jewish connection from the land, and it's sad. We're stand standing over the most spectacular finds which were found during the excavations here. This is, in fact, the balustrade. The balustrade which stood on the corner of the Temple Mount on the southwest corner, exactly above our heads, right at the top over there. And when the uh, temple was destroyed, this was pushed down into the street. So we're looking at the very corner balustrade you can see behind me. And over here we have an inscription in Hebrew which says Lebetat Kia Lehach and the word then is broken off. But this is in very clear uh, Hebrew script, something that any child could even read today. Uh, and it says to the place of trumpeting to declare or to divide. To declare or divide what? Well, luckily we have other sources that are useful for us and the most important source we have in this case is, uh, is the Mishnah and the second source we have is Josephus Flavius and they both talk about the fact that uh, on the corner of the Temple Mount stood the trumpeter who had uh, silver trumpets and he would stand there uh, to declare into, into the uh, surrounding countryside with three blows. That would happen on the Sabbath or before the Sabbath. And when you find something like this that's uh, quote directly out of the Mishnah mm -hmm. and we then prove it archaeologically to be true mm -hmm. that it really happened here in this space 2,000 years ago that's right. and then we're listening to the Tkiah, we're listening to the call of Hallel this morning yeah. from uh, the Kotel Plaza meaning for 2,000 years there have been calls here by Jewish people to celebrate or to uh, mark our religious times uh, what does that mean to you? This is very exciting to see that what happens here today. We have a continuation from what happened then all the way through what happens till today. And of course that, for anybody uh, who's part of living in this country, uh, is a very important aspect of the continuation of Jewish life from that time all the way through till modern times. From the time King David established Jerusalem as the eternal capital of Israel, it has been conquered many times. None of them ever called Jerusalem their capital. Many considered its sites to be holy, but none held it as important as the Jewish people, who prayed each and every day for thousands of years for a return to Zion, a return to Jerusalem. In 1947, the United Nations proposed a partition plan to divide the land of Israel into two sections, one for a new Jewish state and the other for a new Arab state, side by side. They suggested making Jerusalem an international city that they would administer. They argued that only through independent rule could everyone have access to their holy sites. You will notice that there is no safe way to get to the international city from the proposed Jewish state. Jerusalem is an island in this plan with the proposed Arab state surrounding it on all sides. Why would the UN consider this a viable solution in 1947? Probably for the same reason that UNESCO decided in 2017 that the Jews have no historical claim to the city whatsoever. In spite of all of this, the Jews accepted the 1947 UN partition plan, and the Arabs rejected it. In 1948, a coalition of Arab armies attacked the proposed Jewish state. Miraculously, the small Jewish population defeated the Arab coalition, and the state of Israel was born. In the process, Jerusalem was divided in half. The western side, which contained no historical sites, was incorporated into the Jewish state and the eastern side of Jerusalem, including the Old City and all of the religious sites, was occupied by Jordan. And while all were welcome to visit the Israeli side, Jews living in the Old City, now under Jordanian control, were forced to evacuate. The Arabs took great pride in destroying Jewish sacred places. This is a picture of Tiferet Yisrael Synagogue in Jerusalem. This is a picture of it after the Jordanians assumed control and destroyed it in 1948. 
This is a picture of the Cherva Synagogue. This is a picture of the Cherva Synagogue after the Jordanians destroyed it in 1948. Did your dad tell you about walking down King David Street, Street, Street. and seeing the old city and yeah. what that looked like to him in those days between 48 and 67? Yeah. Nothing was safe. Nothing was safe. People would shoot. Uh, Jordanians would shoot. Across. Jordanians would shoot across the. All the history, the Jewish history of Jerusalem was on the other side and was out of reach. Then in 1967, Jordan entered the Six-Day War. In defense, Israel pushed Jordan back across the Jordan River and reunited East and West Jerusalem to form a single unified capital city. And in a gesture that Israel hoped would engender a new spirit of neighborly cooperation, Israel gave the local Muslims the right to control the top of the Temple Mount their holy site, the Dome of the Rock, which stands on the site where our Jewish holy temple once stood. For the first time in the history of the city, the ruling country gave up control of the Temple Mount. And how did the Muslim authorities react? They immediately banned Jews from praying there. And that is how the Temple Mount remains today. <laughs> But Jerusalem is more than the old city and the Temple Mount. Jerusalem is not just a museum of sites from thousands of years ago. It's a modern, thriving city once again that is home to Hadassah Hospital, Hebrew University, outdoor markets, delicious restaurants, and incredible fun. All of that developed irrespective of foreign recognition of Jerusalem as the Jewish capital. The truth is that the Jewish state, like all other nations, is entitled to select and develop its own capital city. U.S. recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital should not be a big deal. It's simply an acknowledgement of reality. It was true in ancient Israel, and it's true today. Her capital was never anywhere else. History matters. Truth matters. And it's time for the world to honor Israel's choice, just like it does every other nation on earth. I was raised regarding Jerusalem as the spiritual and political capital of Israel, appreciating the Museum Jerusalem and loving the modern one as well. I have sung Jerusalem of gold with my community and have wished my family and friends next year in Jerusalem every Jewish New Year. I've tried to live Psalm 137. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let me forget the right side of my body by teaching the meaning and power of our capital city to my children, even living there with my family for a year in her holy embrace. For us, Jerusalem is a place where we walk on ancient stones and apply the wisdom of our ancestors to our renewed destiny, where our Jewish past meets our Jewish future. Jewish tradition has a story in terms of background for Jerusalem that there were two brothers. One brother was alone, didn't have a family, and one was blessed to have a wife and, and children and a very full house. And each one was concerned about the other. The, the single brother felt, I don't really have so many needs, let me go help my brother who has such a large family. The one who was blessed with so much felt, my brother doesn't have anything, let me help him. And at different hours uh, of the night, each one would go and deliver food and goods to the other's property. And they were wondering, how is this happening that I'm giving to my brother and yet I'm not losing anything uh, in the process. I still have the same amount of crops and food. One night they happened to meet each other as they were both in the process of delivering the food and the goods to the other. And they met on that spot and they realized that, oh my goodness, all these years we've each been looking out for each other. They embraced and God said, this is the spot where my temple will reside. This is gonna be the source of spirituality and good to the world. And that is what Jerusalem is supposed to stand for. The idea of brotherhood, the idea of human beings looking out for the other, the idea of charity and chesed, acts of loving kindness, which is the epitome of what God ultimately is as the ultimate giver. That's why Jerusalem is supposed to be the source of spirituality and connection to God. That was established at that moment where two human beings showed the ultimate level of caring, of thinking about others, and of giving. Have you ever been part of an excavation where you felt political pressure 
because it might reveal some truth about the history of the city. Not during the excavation itself, but after the excavation is finished and once you've published the results, there is often political discussion and political pressure, which is not necessarily applied to you, but certainly applied to the story. Because as archaeologists, we publish what we find. We don't in any way at all try to push it in some direction uh, to, to fit anybody's particular agenda. Whatever we do is found, is taken by other people, especially politicians, on both sides of the, uh, of the political divide, uh, as something which they can use as a sort of springboard to actually uh, legitimize whatever ideas they particularly have. That's something that we see, we see constantly. People who truly understand the meaning of Jerusalem to the Jewish people, they understand that if you take Jerusalem away, from the Jewish people, you have now ripped the heart out of the Jewish people. This is the source of our existence, of our, of our being. But the mistake that they make is that we don't view it as just the heart for the Jewish people. This is the mistake. That story that I told you uh, and the legend, which is the basis for the idea of Jerusalem, doesn't say anything about Jews. It just says two human beings. We believe that, yes, it's our capital city from which every single person around the world, Jew or not Jew, can, uh, can drink their spirituality and breathe uh, an existence together with God. That's why in our prophets it talks about the Temple Mount as being a place place of worship for all people. It doesn't say uh, just for the Jewish people. It's for all the nations. And sure enough, when we had the temple on this spot, this was a place where nations of the world could come and they could offer uh, sacrifices and connect spiritually to God as well. If you look at the history of Jerusalem, the only time Jerusalem was open for people of all faiths to worship as they chose was when Jewish people had control over Jerusalem. When it's given out to other bodies, they say it's ours and ours only, and Jews can't worship there, Christians can't worship there, Muslims can't worship there. Whoever's in control always denied the rights to everyone else. Under Jewish control, in a united Jerusalem, that's where all faiths can pray and worship, and all can tap into this spirituality, and all can tap into this source of good. So that's why we fight for that control, not for Jewish control, but to give the entire world this connection to God. Sadly, these bodies around the world that are fighting against us, they understand that if they take out our heart, then Jewish control over Israel falls away, and perhaps even that source of spirituality and goodness that can come to the world, and that light can also fade away. I started working on this documentary to help empower Jewish people to advocate for Jerusalem, to articulate its importance, to see our ties to the city through history, politics, and the Bible. Over the course of making this film, I learned something I hadn't thought about before. Beforehand, if you had asked me if Jerusalem should be in the hands of the Jewish people, my answer would have been an unequivocal yes. Yes, based on our unique relationship to Jerusalem over 3,000 years. Now I realize that there's another reason. Jerusalem must be controlled by the state of Israel alone in order for all of its religious sites to remain open and accessible to all people, regardless of religion and practice. There's only one people who protects Jerusalem for all, who preserves her for all, who keeps her gates open for all, who has called her home forever. What does Jerusalem mean to you? Basically, it's home. It's home. It's home. It's the center of the country that I live in and my favorite place in the world. What does Jerusalem mean to me? Well, first, first and foremost, it's home. To me, everything. It means absolutely everything. For me, Jerusalem, it's not only the capital of my country, it's also my heart of my belief. Jerusalem means to me, it means passion, it means life, it means contentness in life, it means a spirit, it's an idea which grows within people. And as a Jewish person, it means a hometown. It means where I can wear a keeper and walk down the street with freedom, which I can't do in London. Jerusalem is everything that the Jewish soul and heart has been longing for for over 2,000 years. And I get to live here. I got it. I'm here. That is a tremendous blessing. We live in a time of great blessing. For the first time in 2,000 years, the Jewish people have built a Jewish state. And we decided to return to our spiritual capital and proclaim it our political capital once again. Now it's time for the world to honor our decision. It is a blessing to pray facing toward Jerusalem. And it's a blessing to know that we can once again walk the streets of Jerusalem freely. For the Jewish Roadmap, 
our national compass points to Jerusalem. Our future once again resides there. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May all those who love her benefit. Advocate for the sake of Jerusalem, so that all our children may know her.